everybody welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be doing a review on this paper cutter this is something that i bought in march 2020 it came from ebay and when i purchased it it was under nine pounds the delivery would definitely have been free because that's something i always look for on ebay and it is something i purchased with my own money this was not gifted to me it was not sent to me in exchange for a review I just like to review products once I've used them um, in case it can be helpful to somebody else. So the opinions in this video are purely my own. They are not anything to do with YouTube or eBay or anyone else. Just little old me and what I think of this paper cutter. Now, before I go any further, if you're not already a subscriber to the channel, I would absolutely love it if you could just pause the video and click subscribe. And while you're there, don't forget to ring the notification button so that you get told when I upload future videos. So when I purchased this, I didn't have at the time a paper trimmer and my guillotine was broken. So I needed something that was cheap and quite quick to get to me so that I could cut my cardstock and paper pads for my projects. So I had a little look around and I found this on eBay. Now there were a few things that really drew me to this product. First of all, I really liked this button for holding the paper down. I thought that would be really useful. I also really like the fact that it's cut in mechanism. It's not a blade. I thought that that would be cost effective in the long run because you're not constantly paying out for new blades when they blunt. And I also like the fact that it was metal. Um, I thought that would make it a little bit more robust and give it some longevity. So let's have a closer look at this paper cutter. As I mentioned, it is a metal base and underneath it's literally just hollow. It has got rubber feet all round so that it doesn't move around your workspace. It has got the paper button to hold your paper down. It's very simple to use. You literally unscrew it and then move it along this bar and then you screw it back into place when you're done. Once that is screwed in, it's not going anywhere. That's not moving. The button itself It's made of plastic. I wouldn't say it was particularly flimsy. You could probably snap it if you were that way minded, but why would you want to do that? It is kind of hollow this side. That's obviously where it fits on the bar. And it is what it is. It's just a batten. The paper cutter itself is 10 inches by 12 inches. Now that 12 inch measurement is not a true measurement. When I'm cutting 12 by 12 cardstock or 12 by 12 paper pads, it does tend to bend the bottom corner of the um, cardstock or paper pad as you're cutting it. So I don't think that's a true 12 inch down the side. You can cut a 12 by 12 pad across the top. It just takes a bit of negotiation, shall we say. I really like the fact that it's got the cut guides on here. So we've got B7, B6, A5, B5 and A4. Um, that's quite handy. You also have measurements here. So you have inches across the top and then you have centimetres. This is leaning more towards centimetres because you have centimetres here. You have centimetres down the side. And you also have centimetres along the bottom. Now that's great if you work predominantly in centimetres, but as a paper crafter, I tend to work more in inches. I just find that easier. Um, so only having one line of inches, not the best. Um, the, the cutting mechanism itself, I really like. So it actually locks into place, as you can see, that's not 
going anywhere so i really like that because a it gives you a handle you can carry it around by here's my other hand i'm holding it with just the one hand so you can carry it around like that if you need to move from room to room plus it means there's not going to be any accidents as a mother to a small child safety is very important to me um i don't tend to craft when she's around but you never know what she's going to grab so i like the fact that it locks into place it is very easy to unlock and lock all you need to do to unlock it is push it to the side and down slightly and that is now unlocked and ready to go to lock it just push it to the side i'm literally just doing it with my thumb bring it down and it locks into place that's done that's not going anywhere so where it locks in is just here just catches in there and then that's not moving the cut mechanism itself it reminds me of a file my dad was actually a carpenter and it reminds me of the files he used to use it's smooth on both sides here it's smooth here however when you look on this bit i don't know if it'll show up particularly well but there are diagonal lines running across the bottom of the file you can hear that there's texture there and that's what gives you your cut so let's show you this actually being used i've got here just a scrap piece of paper i'll unlock it i'll put that there i will use the button for this part of the video so just screw that on there and done so you've got a nice crisp cut line it does the job absolutely fine It will do thicker cardstock and paper pads as well. Now, I have had a love-hate relationship with this and here is why. First of all, this pattern, although it was a key selling point to me when I purchased it, I soon realised that actually it's pretty useless. So I don't ever have this attached to the bar. This is normally just by the side of my desk be honest i've kept it because it goes with the paper cutter but i don't use it um it doesn't really hold cardstock or paper in place particularly well like once it's on the bar it's not moving but i just don't find it helpful for holding paper in place it still moves and because it doesn't reach all the way down if you've got a larger piece of cardstock as you start to bring this part over here down your cut mechanism down the bottom of the card actually lifts up so i just find it easier to hold everything with my arm rather than this so not impressed with the button so we get rid of that um as i mentioned earlier we only have one row of inches there was no inches on the bottom so when you are positioning your paper You've got something to put it up to at the top, but there's nothing at the bottom that it correlates to, so you can make sure you're actually straight, and that bugged me a bit. What also would have been nice on the inches would be to have um, some of the eighths. So at the moment, we've got one, we've got one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarters, two. What would have been nice would have been to have like one and one eighth, one and five eighths, one and three eighths, one and seven eighths. But that's just my personal preference, but I just think it would have been useful to have those in there. One of the reasons I've had a love-hate relationship with this was when I first got it, I didn't believe I was getting a true six inch cut. Um, and I would cut something on here and then measure it on my scoreboard and it would be out so i'm not really sure what i was doing wrong i do now believe that that's six inches 
as I say, I'm not sure what I was doing wrong, but I'm happier now. I'm not convinced you always get a completely straight cut with this. Um, I have noticed that when I'm cutting DSP and then trying to mat it onto cardstock, often it looks quite wonky. Um, and I'll often start with a straight edge for the lining up against the numbers. So I don't know whether it's moving, despite my best attempts to hold it all still, but um, yeah, I'm just not convinced I always get a completely straight cut with this. What this is absolutely fantastic for is cutting paper pads down. So if you've got a paper pad which has got glitter on it, or pearlescent sheets or anything that's not just plain cardstock really this is fantastic it doesn't blunt this can't blunt i was spending so much money on tonic blades where i kept blunting them by cutting my dsp with them because i'd kind of gone through a hate relationship with this at that point um and i wasn't using it and I just thought, you know, this is ridiculous. I'm spending so much money on blades. Let's get this out. Let's play with it. Let's really try and understand where I'm going wrong. And honestly, I haven't looked back. I love that this doesn't blunt. I have cut other things on this as well. I have cut down, um, I don't know whether it was grey board or something very similar, Um but I haven't just stuck to cutting cardstock on this and it goes through most things. I've been quite impressed with this, if I'm honest, but it is brilliant for when you're making a card or a project and you're using a paper pad that has texture in it. It's great for cutting that down to size, doing your mats and layers. Um, I have resorted a couple of times to measuring it out on my scoreboard and then cutting the score line on this to make sure I've got it 100% correct, where I still don't quite trust these measurements over here. Um, but yeah, I am loving this again. Um, I use it more than my tonic trimmer now. My tonic trimmer is literally just for cardstock now. Plain, core, cardstock. This does everything else if i could change it in any way i would make it 12 by 12 true 12 by 12 i would add an inches measure at the bottom of the cutter so you have something to line up to and i would put in some of the eights as well apart from that i'm actually quite pleased with it i do have to say so if you're looking for a cheap paper cutter that's not going to cost you a fortune in replacement blades, I would actually recommend this. I love the locking mechanism. I love that this can't go blunt. I love that it goes through all my paper pads and more. The button to hold your cardstock in place, if I'm honest, it's a bit of a waste of time. Um, I've taken mine off. I won't be putting it back on. That's just my personal preference. Others might think it's brilliant i just think it's too short really so if you're looking for a cheap and cheerful paper cutter then i would recommend these off of ebay there are obviously other products out there on the craft market that will probably do the job exactly the same or better but for under a tenner i don't think you can really go wrong with something like this so if you're just starting out and you haven't got the money for a crocodile or something like that this is going to do you absolutely fine Thank you very much for watching the video today. I really hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful and informative. I have tried to be fair as well as honest and as I say at the moment I am loving this product and I use it all the time. I'd love to know your thoughts on this product so don't forget to leave me some comments in the description box below let me know what you think and if you've got this what do you think? How do you feel about the batten bar? Thank you so so much for watching today if you've enjoyed the video please give it a massive thumbs up i'll be back soon with more videos so until next time take care and i'll see you soon bye for now